Lava flow sped up overnight, and it is now threatening to cross Government Beach Road. People in the Kapoho area, including Kapoho Beach lots and vacation land, they are being told to evacuate because their exit routes could be cut off. And compounding the problem is that cell and landline connections have been severely limited because of down utility poles. Yeah, our Mileka Lincoln is live in Lower Puno with the very latest on this. What's going on this morning, Mileka? Aloha, good morning, Steve. Grace, well, you guys mentioned the fact that much of the communication infrastructure within this area, unfortunately, has gone down as a result of that fast moving flow that's coming from a still very intensely fountaining Fisher 8. And that's one of the reasons why at last night's informational meeting at Pahoa High School, we heard Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency officials and Hawaii County Mayor Harry Kim make the commitment that they would be going door to door throughout this area, making sure that residents are aware of what the current threat level is and, as you mentioned, advising them to take the time now to evacuate while they still have access. There are so many areas right now throughout Lower Puna where, unfortunately, roads are no longer accessible as a result of these lava flows. Of course, Highway 132 getting crossed at mile marker 3 yesterday just before 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This after that lava flow had already passed through Puna Geothermal Venture, cutting across their main driveway. They do still have a back road in and out of the plant, and that's how they will continue to monitor for the potential of hydrogen sulfide release. But that same fissure that has been responsible for these fast-moving flows is continuing to get fuel, continuing to be fed, and it's now creating enough energy along the Lower East Rift Zone that it is pushing that flow now in the direction toward Four Corners. Highway 132 which had already been shut down from Lava Tree State Park to Four Corners, right there again along the edge of Nanavale and on the back side of Hawaiian beaches for those who are using Government Beach Road. They can now no longer access that area, and that's because, according to Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency officials, they do believe that this flow is going to follow that path of steepest descent, having already cut across Highway 132, as we mentioned, at mile marker 3, going through the area of Noni Farm Roads, also Halekamahina Loop Road, which is why they ordered a mandatory evacuation of those areas just before 10 o'clock last night. And they do think that it is going to cut through four corners. And of course, that will have a huge impact on anyone who lives down in the Kapoho area. As you guys mentioned, vacation land, Kapoho Beach lots, that entire portion of the coast of Lower Puna that has at this time been accessible despite the fact that a flow did cut across Highway 137, shutting down that area between Pohoiki and Kamaili roads. This would add to yet another area where folks cannot get in or out. That's why they're being asked to take this time now to leave while they still have that access. We'll talk more about this coming up in the next half hour. For now, back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Mileka. All right, take a look at a new photo that we've gotten from the USGS. We're told that lava fountains are causing these black pumice stones to rain down in nearby communities. These rocks are porous and they form during explosive volcanic eruptions. A New York couple was cited for allegedly driving their Jeep to Lava Tree State Monument to catch a glimpse of the lava. They apparently got around a checkpoint but were cited for loitering and refusal to evacuate during a pending disaster. A boat owner who tied up at the closed Pohuiki boat ramp was also cited. The Department of Land and Natural Resources says the citations are all petty misdemeanors, but they could carry higher penalties than normal since they happened in a disaster area. Bro, a torrent of lava continues to erupt from fissure number eight. It's a geyser shooting hundreds of feet in the air just in the past half hour. This image from a remote USGS cam shows the fountain in the middle of Leilani Estates. That's the same source responsible for fast moving flows that claimed 20 homes in the past two days. This afternoon, lava from Fisher 8 crossed Highway 132 and damaged Helco equipment, cutting off power to Kapoho, Lani Puna Gardens, and part of Leilani Estates. Here's a look at the map. That arrow shows where lava crossed Highway 132, what used to be a 10-minute drive between Pahoa Town and Kapoho, marked in red, is no longer possible. Now, coastal residents have to go up and around through Hawaiian beaches. That's the green line. It's about a 30-minute drive. At a packed community meeting in Pahoa tonight, residents made it clear they are tired of living in shelters 
and need help finding long-term housing. Senator Kaya'i Kahele was there after doing a flyover through the lava zone today. He says the governor should use his emergency powers to open state land and fast track some basic housing units. The big topic tonight, a petition asking the state to lift the curfew for residents of Leilani Estates. Some of them, some of them have obligations that make it tough to be back every night by six. We've also had people who have arrived at that checkpoint at five minutes after six and had to sleep all night in their cars and weren't permitted to go in. So we're asking for a little compassion, a little understanding. Andy Andrews there says lifting the curfew would involve no extra security costs since authorities are stationed outside the neighborhood around the clock anyway. The lava cut off the access road to the Puna geothermal plant. The staff now has to rely on a back road to get in and out. Lava has also covered a well pad at the site. Nothing I, that I know of is designed to uh, operate with lava intrusion. So there's going to be some things that burn up, you know, oil is going to make a big black cloud and smell real bad and probably not be good to breathe. Well, despite that possibility, officials still don't fear a release of hydrogen sulfide. Tonight, Mileka Lincoln reports near the Fisher sending lava toward the plant. Aloha, we are here at the intersection of Luana and Kahukai streets, where through the haze, you can see the glow from the lava fountain shooting upwards 200 feet. This, according to USGS HVO scientists, is Fisher 8, which reactivated yesterday, sending a rushing flow of Pohoi Hoi through this subdivision before crossing Pohoiki Road earlier this morning and taking aim at the driveway of Puna Geothermal Venture. It was just unbelievable. You can't even imagine how fast it was moving. Um, you just never knew that it could move that quick. It was, it was literally like water. Writing out across their plant site, PGV officials tell us they believe they've mitigated all potential hazards, including the release of hydrogen sulfide with the quenching and plugging of their 11 wells. According to USGS HVO geologist, Fisher 8 is responsible for the same Pohoi Hoi flow that broke out this morning, once again crossing Pohoiki Road and taking aim for Puna Geothermal Venture, cutting across the driveway and main access route into the geothermal plant just before 9 o'clock this morning. Reporting from inside Leilani Estates, Mileka Lincoln, Hawaii News Now. The USGS says Fisher 8 is also producing lightweight volcanic glass and fibers known as Pele's hair. These are file photos. It's hazardous to eyes and skin. The eruption also scattered larger lava fragments called tephra. This photo shows it covering Leilani Street.